Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're gonna to assemble a 2JZ for land speed racing. For those of you that caught the disassembly video for the engine that came out of the Datsun, it had a fair share of problems and was arguably at end of life. The short block is going to consist of a set of CP 9 to 1 86 millimeter pistons that have the skirts done in an abradable coating. Connecting rods are Carrillo. The main caps are a set of billet real street main caps that are held in place with the 625 custom age main stud kit that we sell here at real street. The main bearings are ACL, the rod bearings are king coated, and there's a set of trend piston pins that are going to hold those connecting rods to the pistons. The engine block has been prepped by Mazworks, so it's got their CNC freeze plugs and CNC oil galley plugs, along with all the machining that needs to be done to properly rebuild an engine. The cylinder head was also done by Mazworks. It's got a set of Brian Crower dual valve springs. It's got a Kelford coated bucket with a new set of Brian Crower 276 camshafts. So you guys have probably seen me put one of these engines together, but we're gonna pause for a minute and focus our attention on the thrust bearing or thrust washers. So that's gonna be on the number four main cap on a 2JZ. As you pull that thrust cap down into place, you wanna make sure that your thrust washers are still free, that they're not stuck on each other and that you've got them in the right orientation. And then once you get the cap down into the register and it's hand tight, I will back the cap hardware off so the hardware is not tight and I'm going to shift the crank around and make sure that the cap is in alignment and the bearing is going to align that cap. If you're dealing with an engine block that the main cap is doweled or a bed plate engine that everything is doweled, this isn't really a concern. But when you're dealing with main caps that float in registers, you want to make sure that the main cap is centered. That way you have good even thrust wear. So I just take a mallet and I'll knock the crankshaft back in the block. And basically that driving force is gonna force the thrust surface of the crankshaft up against the bearing and push up against the cap. And then it's gonna get the thrust washer that is in the block and the thrust washer that is in the cap on the same axis. So they're not gonna be a step where if you have the cap forward and then you're gonna have uneven wear or not enough thrust clearance. So when I mocked it up, I had four thousandths of an inch of thrust clearance. And now that I'll center this main cap and torque it in place, I'll be back to that same four thousandths of an inch of thrust clearance. One of the things that you'll notice on these pistons is the coating on the skirt. So this is the abradable coating from line to line. And what we've done, and we've put about three thousandths of an inch of coating on the skirts of the pistons. Reason being is that's an 86 millimeter piston. The block had already been run. So we had to go overbore slightly by three or four thousandths in order to get the bore straight and the right surface finish 
for the oil and the rings and everything to work well on. But by then we had a, what I would consider an excessive piston wall clearance. So having this coating done isn't real cheap. It's a few hundred bucks, but it's gonna buy me back to the correct piston wall clearance. And it also does a really nice job of retaining oil. So it's kind of a spongy, porous looking coating under a microscope. And what that's gonna do is keep more oil on the bores, which will then help in piston uh, scuffing and ring seal. So the CP pistons typically don't come coated. You can get it as an option, but this coating that you see here is not done through the regular channels. It's been done through line to line. And it's an add-on that we're doing to work around a displacement class because you wouldn't wanna just buy a a brand new block every time you needed to stay at that 86 uh, millimeter bore size and we're using a factory crankshaft and we have to basically stay under what would be a 20 thousandths overbore or even a 10 thousandths overbore 2JZ. So it's a workaround to stay in the displacement class that we're going to race the car in. These trend pins are a no-brainer. They are a through hardened part. We have had excellent longevity with these pins in the Janitor Supra. Uh, we have excellent longevity in the Roadster and the Liner with these pins. They are a little bit pricey, but we did manage at some point to bend a 250 wall pin in Jared Holt's car. And I kind of got nervous because if you bend a pin, it closes up the oil clearance, closes up the oil clearance, you're only a matter of time before you are throwing a piston or connecting rod out of the engine. And that's a very expensive and catastrophic situation. So the pins aren't cheap, but it's a very strong part and you buy quite a bit of insurance. So if you have a 2JZ and you're making over 1300 horsepower or so, I would say that both the custom age main stud kit and the trend pins are uh, good insurance policies to purchase. So these bolts, if you look at them, they look quite a bit different than the ARP bolts you're probably used to seeing. These are car bolts and the Corilla rod can be used with a car bolt, which does not use uh, the ARP bolt lube. It uses a blend of anti-seize and they torque to 65 foot pounds. It's a very expensive bolt, um, but the ones that came off the car had been hammered on with an impact wrench or something, so we didn't reuse them. I used just an OEM Toyota turbo head gasket. I have the deck wiped clean and dry. There's no spray anything on the head gasket, just a regular Toyota head gasket. Whenever you install your Toyota head gasket, make sure that this ID tag is on the rear exhaust side of the block. 
That way the head gasket is in the correct orientation. There's an oil hole right here. That oil is gonna flow up from the main galley into the cylinder head. And if you put the head gasket on incorrectly, you will end up with um, water and oil mixed and you'll have to take the engine back apart. So the cheat here is just look at this little tab. This is kind of your marker and that the oiling hole, this small hole back here in the gasket is over the oiling hole that goes down to the main galley. So this uh, is a new, this is a new cast uh, camshaft from BC. Their stuff is chilled cast. And the chilled cast, if you look at it under a microscope, it's not kind of like a rough, kind of like a porosity. And that acts as a uh, oil reservoir. And the idea with the new camshaft is to kind of rub or apply some thick lubricant. You can kind of just like rub it on the metal and you'll get it into the little valleys of the porosity of the casting and you just want good coverage because it's a flat top at camshaft and you don't want to have lobe damage on startup so the other thing that we did in the valve train of this engine well we changed a couple of things now we've got a fresh set of camshafts we've got a set of kelford uh, dlc coated buckets and a set of bc dual valve springs before this engine just had single valve springs on it which um wouldn't be quite enough you know single valve spring kit on a jay-z for a pretty basic vehicle um if you're going to be running you know 30 plus pounds of boost you know any common modern build it's almost worth considering moving to at least a conical valve spring or a dual valve spring kit in case you haven't installed camshafts in a jay-z before i've got the pins off at like 11 o'clock so the cam pins are kind of both facing so the cams are close to timed I've got the crank keyway back around 10:30, 11 o'clock, and this is going to move all the pistons down from the deck. So you don't want to run the pistons into the valves, and you don't want to run the valves into the valves. So once these, once one camshaft is bolted down, you you don't just rotate that camshaft because you can run that into the other valves. So treat this engine as an interference engine once you've put aftermarket camshafts in it. That way you don't uh, run your new parts into um, pistons and valves and create damage before you even run the engine. So we've got the engine dressed and ready to go back in the car. We're gonna go ahead and go through the startup and break-in procedure for that abradable coating that we're using on the pistons. So we'll walk you through all that and just do some basic shakedown because the next time this car will be operated will be on a racetrack.
So I'm ready to fire up the Datsun. I've got the oil pump primed. I just put 25 gallons of water in the uh, engine water tank. I've synced the ignition timing in the computer because I changed to a 36 minus two crank trigger. And now I'm ready to fire it up. I'm gonna fire it up. Once it has good oil pressure, I'm gonna raise the engine speed up uh, and then start peeking around and make sure I don't have any leaks. So we're not going to make any power pulls, but we do want to go ahead and bed in that abradable coating. So they give some instructions with it. It's just light load pulls, you know, load the engine, let the engine decel, load the engine, let the engine decel, like stuff that you'd see in a 50 year old manual on engine break in. And because this engine is going to go directly to El Mirage and get raced for over a mile, um, having some break in period is a good thing. Anyway, it also gives you an opportunity to dial in some of the fuel map uh, that we haven't been in yet because this car was never dynoed before. It was just, um, we picked some numbers out of, uh, out of other calibrations, fuel maps and whatnot, and we just went racing with it. So we can have a little opportunity to tailor that right now on the machine. And uh, then we can head off to El Mirage. So we're done with our break-in procedure of the abradable coating. We're gonna go ahead and dump the break-in oil out, put some HPL 2050 in it, load this thing in a trailer, and the next time I see it, I'll be at the dry lake bed at El Mirage. A uh, pretty wild little car. It's 90 inch wheelbase. It's one of the old school Japanese um, hot rods that kind of started the whole thing. I don't think you'll see another little Datsun like this one. If you are gonna come out to either El Mirage or Bonneville, feel free to stop by the pits and we can chat about this car or other cars. And if you have any questions uh, pertaining to this car or anything else for that matter, comment down below. We'll see you next time.